What's that? Oh, you got it on there. Oh, thank you so much. Oh, wonderful. Okay. Um, <laughs> so I always like to start off by showing how much fun my team has because um, it is a really tough, can be a really gross job, honestly. But we do have a lot of fun, so I do like to highlight that um, with my pictures. So. Boom. Okay, there we go. Awesome. Uh, so yeah, for last year we had 434,000 pounds of trash that we disposed of. And uh, that was about 17,000 trash bags that we threw away. So I'd um, like to highlight that. McCandy, who is our contractor for our flowers, they planted 45,938 plants, flowers. And then over the winter time, they had 10,340 branches, bows, and pine cones. I just think that's a really interesting number to talk about. Um, they're still out right now, so spring planting should be happening within the next couple months. Uh, we also watered 10,960 planters and pots out there. We had a higher number this year than last year because we actually were staffed, which is really wonderful. We were fully staffed by the end of the year. We also removed 190,000 weeds in our downtown, so sidewalks, beds, everything, all that included. Um, we also had some new equipment last year. We added a couple of small pressure washers that are handheld. You can actually drop that into a bucket or attach it to uh, a gallon jug or something like that. This allows us to be a little bit more flexible whenever we have some stains out there that we need to take care of that would uh, go into our mega brutes, the trash, rolling trash cans that we actually push around. So we can put those in there as well as our vacuum blower. So that's the thing that's on the uh, top left there. That is also something that we can put in the Mega Brutes and deploy pretty easily. It is a vacuum on one side, and then we switch it up, and it's a blower. So we could blow leaves into a pile and then suck it up with the vacuum. So that's really handy new uh, equipment that we put in last year. So looking forward to using it again. And then, of course, we have our snow blowers, billy goats, um, weed whackers. So in total, we spent about 331 hours utilizing these pieces of equipment. Let's see, uh, for the loo, I love talking about the loo. My goal for the loo is to uh, feel comfortable bringing my children down to utilize it. And I think that I always do. I utilize it whenever I'm downtown with my kids all the time um, and I feel good about it. So we cleaned it over a thousand times last year. The goal is to clean it at least five times a day. Sometimes things get in the way of that, but that is our goal. And then of course we respond whenever we get calls uh, and take care of it as well. So I love talking about that, Lou. Uh, we cleaned up 3,900 um, instances of biohazards. Biohazards are human biohazards. <laughs> Sometimes they can be small animals. And then of course needles, because safety is super important to me out there. Uh, we clean up needles, needles everywhere. And dog poo as well. Um, <laughs> snow removal, we cleaned up. Uh, we removed snow from 16,000 pieces of infrastructure. So that is the crosswalks where people cross, meters, fire hydrants, bus stops, bike racks. Uh, mobility is super important to me, so we make sure that our, our crosswalks are wide enough for people that utilize wheelchairs um, and just have low mobility. We also cleared the sidewalk around the dog parks that we take care of, which we uh, introduced the West Side Dog Park last year as well. So that picture in the bottom middle is our John Deere Gator with our giant plow just clearing that snow. It was a lot. Um, yeah. Let's see. Last year, we also welcomed four grow kids back. So those are the 14 to 21 age range that uh, come and just learn how to clean in our downtown. One of them actually said he didn't know how to sweep, so he learned a lot this past year. One of the, <laughs> it's like, how do you not know how to sweep? <laughs> What? Um, one of them actually returned for her third year, so that's really exciting. Hopefully this year she said that she would like to work with us because she'll be of age to uh, join our team, which would be really great. But she was able to return for the third year and she actually helped us by um, teaching these, these younger uh, youth about what we do and kind of guiding them. So that was a really awesome experience for us and for her. She's on the bottom left there sitting at the table. Um, her name is Cammie, so. Hopefully we'll see her back again this year. We also collaborated with Public Museum High School to clean South Division. We hit it twice last year, um, and this year we've already done it twice in the first uh, quarter. So we have another uh, day that we're planning out, and hopefully we will continue to do that uh, again. So. 
<clears throat> excuse me. Uh, we assisted DGRI, of course, with several events, including World of Winter and the first annual Return to the River, which was a blast. And um, I like to let my ambassadors participate in activities because, you know, what's the point of being there if you can't have a little bit of fun? Uh, so that's one of my ambassadors on the bottom right there getting her arms dipped, which was really cool. Uh, we also provided over uh, 1,700 mobility assistance. So what we consider mobility assistance is jumps for vehicles. Uh, we can change your tires. We've helped push people out of the snow or shovel snow out of their tire wheels to, to get them out safely. We also walk people to their destinations. We provide uh, umbrella escorts if it's raining. So that's what we consider our mobility escorts. Uh, we also conducted 9,813 business contacts, which is four more than we did in 2021. Again, we were better staffed than we were in the previous year, but also um, we kind of did a little bit more of a push to let businesses know, we are here for you, this is how we can help you, but it's also a really important information gathering tool for our ambassadors. Their job is to um, you know, promote downtown. So when we have visitors, we want to make sure we know where to send them when they want a burger or where they can get um, an extension cord or, you know, whatever it might be. So uh, last year we opened 1,800 maintenance requests and closed 1,600 of them, which I think is a really big number. When we open maintenance requests, they're for things that we need to take care of downtown ourselves, so pressure washing or repairs to our own infrastructure, but we also send maintenance requests to the city, to MDOT, the Rapid, all sorts of other entities for things that we cannot take care of ourselves. So uh, closing out 1,600 of them, I think, is a big win. A lot of the ones that were not closed out were, of course, for other entities, so um, something that we cannot handle ourselves. We also removed 3,400 uh, graffitis last year, so that's uh, marker, paint, and flyers, so I think that's a pretty great number. Uh, we also deployed 55 of our newer trash cans, which meant that we were uh, replacing all the ones on Monroe Center with our newest style, and we were able to take those extra trash cans and put them in other places. So we're not only replacing these trash cans with our new style, we are um, enhancing the downtown by adding 55 more trash cans elsewhere. This year, one of our big focuses so far has been putting trash cans at every bus stop within the DID. Uh, because those are places that I think are, are needed. So we've started on that process and we are, we are pretty close to finishing that. So let's see, resident engagement ambassador. That is a new position that we created this year as a, you know, a trial. Hopefully that is something that we can continue on. Their focus is to engage with residents in our downtown. Um, kind of listen to them, hear them out. What are your concerns? What do you love about living downtown? And I am here for you. So we welcomed Jamie for this role and Tevin, who is an existing ambassador, who has worked as a cleaner, um, hospitality, leadership. He has now moved into this role as well. So we have someone experienced and someone new to the team. Jamie, um, some of you may know her. She used to work at Heartside uh, as the GED. Um, she created the GED program there. So having somebody that um, is really knowledgeable about our downtown, um, the services that are offered, some of our unhoused, I think that's really beneficial for um, the role of the resident engagement, maybe helping to bridge that gap. Um, let's see. We're on um, statistics that we are reporting, uh, brand new statistic that was residents engaged. We uh, had 64 of those near the end of the year. Again, we're just discussing what are your, some of your concerns? What do you like? Is there anything we can pass along to DGRI? And just, again, I am here for you. Last year, our hospitality engagements included 59,873 um, instances of just communicating with people, holding doors for them, taking pictures for them, giving their dogs treats, getting to know them. Uh, so that's just our general engagement. We also provided 79,000 pieces of information. Here's where you can go for restaurants, for shopping, um, the weather even. We also provided 12,000 directions to places downtown. Um, calls to GRPD, AMR, fire department, we have 57 of them. We had more calls to the hot team than we did to emergency services. I think the hot team is a really wonderful resource for us because a lot of times we're engaging with people that may be experiencing uh, mental health or substance abuse. So we do a lot, um, we do call the hot team often to come and help us with stuff downtown. And this year we're actually working a little bit more in depth with 
here's who I know, who do you know? How can we help them? What, can you, what services can you provide? Um, so we're getting to know them a lot more um, in depth than we have in the past. So. And is that it? I think I have one more thing. No. All right, that's it. That's all I've got. Any questions? Any comments? questions? Such a great program. We appreciate Thank you so much. everything you do. I love doing the work, so. Yeah, I'll discontinue my graffiti. <laughs> Please and thank you. It was you. you. It was you. It was you. <laughs> Any other comments or questions? I just have one question yes. here. Do you, in addition to the HOT team, do you also work directly with um, the nonprofits who have street outreach teams? Um, I Sometimes, yes, I am a part of the outreach group. So I do attend those meetings at times. We attend the New Hope Sobering Committee as well. So um, yeah, we, we tend to be kind of a middleman with information or you know getting people where they need to go for appointments, okay. whatever it could be. Thanks. Yeah. You seem Thanks fully for your staffed. work. Yeah, how, how many people are on your staff? Right now I have about 23 ambassadors. Not all of them are full-time. Some of them are part-time. And then we will ramp up in uh, the beginning of April to hire more horticulture and pressure washers. Uh, at this moment we are a little bit overstaffed, which is really wonderful. Uh, people taking time off and vacations and sick time um, help us having more people. Sure. Helps us in that process. Okay. So, covering shifts, yeah. Yes. Just, uh I commend you really for all the work that you do. I, I particularly like that last um, slide where you talked about folks calling you guys as opposed to the police department. Mm -hmm. And I really think it's, it yeah. speaks loudly to the city not criminalizing <clears throat> behavior that doesn't need to be criminalized. That sometimes really just needs a little bit of assistance. Not every city does that. Yeah. Um, they're very quick to call the police and these you know, mm -hmm. folks end up in prison or in jail when they don't need to. Um, mm -hmm. So really huge kudos to you, to the Thank team, to so the much. city for doing that. I think yeah. it's, it's brilliant. Yeah, I really do love calling the hot team as opposed to the police because they can provide services that the police just aren't, are, they're just not equipped to. Um, they're not as well informed. They don't have those connections. Um, but we try to, you know, get people to the, the sobering center by walking them there as opposed to calling an ambulance. So we do what we can to kind of lower those calls. So. Yeah. And I'll, I'll give a shout out. Al, good to have you join us. Uh, you know, I'll give a huge shout out to the county. They've been working really hard um, with the city and, and hospitals, and hopefully we'll soon be uh, cutting a ribbon at a crisis stabilization unit that I think will also be very helpful um, awesome. and divert folks who, you know, instead of going to jail, they can go to a crisis stabilization unit. And then at the city, in addition to our hot team, we added and have expanded our mental health co-response team. Mm -hmm. uh, so when an officer does need to respond, if it is a mental health crisis, they can go yeah. with the co-response. That was wonderful to hear. We actually made a call and was like, hey, do you have the mental health cohort <laughs> that you can send with us? So, yeah. We're getting there. Yeah. And, and also, we uh, I say thank you all for the, for the services. Um, and with, with Luis on, you know, love that people will call you first. Um, as a business owner downtown, that's what we do as well. That's how I don't agree that people should be criminalized for um, certain things, and, yeah. and um, it's always the first call. Um, and what I do appreciate about that first call is that oftentimes the ambassadors who um, have a relationship with said individual mm -hmm. um, and can talk with that individual um, and, as you mentioned, kind of ask a few questions, get them what they need mm -hmm. quicker with a very kind human so, so thank you to that. Thank you. Thank you that we have that here in our city. That is my goal. We're building relationships with individuals, getting to know them. We check on them in the morning whenever it's really cold and at night. Um, you know, we've had our experiences that are not so great uh, with people passing away due to cold exposure or, you know, ODing. So um, it's really important for us to build those relationships and check on them on a regular basis. How are you doing? Um, and then, of course, whenever we get phone calls, we can help guide them out of that situation without calling the police. So, yeah, building relationships is really important to our team. Anything else? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, where can we find more information on that youth day? Um, uh, it used to be called Grow, but I cannot remember what it is called now. Do you? Do you uh, know? It's still uh, Grow 1000. Yes, okay. Yeah. And if you, if you want to... Uh, 
take some awesome students, young people, yeah. as part of that program. Yeah. We'd love to talk to you. Welcome. Yeah, we love I had, bringing I had them two on. in my in the mayor's office uh, last summer, and they were awesome. We got three in our in our spot, so and we've been working Thank on that you, program since like 2014. So. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You also get to learn the hip new words, uh, yes. phrases, how to be cool. That's really exciting to me because I'm a cool mom. So yeah. Anything else? Yeah. I appreciate your shyness, by the way. My shyness? <laughs> shyness. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>